Okay, so now we're going to go ahead and edit the actual source code. And we're going to open up the file explorer, go into the C and C, or the C directory, in the C and CM, and actually double click the .src file. All right. and on here is the actual source code for this particular PLC. In the beginning of all of Centroid's uh, PLC programs, the top section is what we call the header. You will always see a semicolon in the front of the line, and then anything after the semicolon on that line is a comment. That means that whenever the PLC program gets compiled, it will not do whatever is after the semicolon. Okay, if we end up looking down here, we see now this line right here, there is no semicolon in front of it, but there's a semicolon from this point on, so that means that whenever the thing is going to compile, anything after this semicolon is a comment. And of course, if there's ever any kind of line of logic that you don't want the thing to be compiled, as if you want to comment it out, that just means adding a semicolon, just like this one right here. We added a semicolon in front of it, so that means that this line now is a complete comment. So whenever it goes to, so whenever it goes to compile that line, since it's a comment, it won't actually do anything as far as that definition is concerned. It'll essentially just skip it right over. All right. So now we're going back to the header again. The header is where it contains variable, viable information uh, concerning the PLC program. First off, it would always have the file name the programmer that created it, the date that it was created on, and a brief description of what that PLC program is for. Typically, if it's for some kind of a specific machine, this is where I would recommend adding that description on here. It'll make it a lot easier for people uh, troubleshooting or if they're looking for a specific uh, PLC program that's tied to a particular machine, they can easily scroll through that and find that. Another thing that Centroid does is anytime there are any kind of modifications done to that PLC program, we have a little section that adds the date that it was done, who did it, and what exactly was done. This also allows anyone in the future to easily troubleshoot or go to that particular section of the PLC program. Another thing that people can end up doing is uh, if you have certain variables that are being used or certain parameters, certain macros, custom M codes, or certain auxiliary buttons, you can also add that into the header, and it just gives it a, a one-stop shop to where someone can just open this thing up and say, okay, this macro is going to be turning this thing on, or this aux button is going to be controlling my vacuum pump. Okay. Then, once we're done with the header, this is where we start defining stuff. Uh, first thing in the definitions are constant definitions. These constant definitions are tied to messages that are being displayed in the CNC message window. Okay, First column is the actual what we're calling it, what we're defining the thing as. This is what is going to be set in the actual logic uh, in the PLC program. Let's say I do go in to find this. And all I did was just highlight that and hit Control F. It's the shortcut key for Notepad plus plus to find that particular item that was highlighted. If you hit Find Next, this is what is actually being set, uh, or sets that message. So what we're defining has to match what's actually in the entire SRC file. So if that didn't match, when you go to compile it, you would get compilation errors because it would say, "Hey, I defined something, but..." I don't have it anywhere in there, or if you're using, let's say you call this AX1 underscore INFLT, when you go to compile it, nothing was ever defined to AX1, so the compiler will throw up a warning. Okay. And of course, we have none. Let's go back to the beginning. Okay. So, on here, we're defining that to a particular constant. Now, you might be asking, you're looking at these and saying, those look very odd. Well, there's a formula for that constant, and that right here is what we highlight in the comment field. The formula is either a 1 or a 2 plus 256 times 5. I'll talk about the 1 and the 2 in just a short bit, but the important thing to know about this 
is this 5? This is what we call the error code. The error code is important because the PLC program is actually setting this value. Okay, And this value was determined by this formula. Well, once the CNC software sees this value, it knows that the error code number 5 was associated with that particular value. So now the CNC software is going to display a message, but it needs to know which message needs to be correctly displayed. So that's where it goes, finds this error code, or sees what this error code is set to, and then it looks at this plcmsg.txt file. That is also in the main CNCM directory. If we search there, you'll see the plcmessage.txt. Okay. So all we do is go ahead and open it up. All right. And here is the actual message file. There's essentially two columns in this message file. First column are the error codes, and then the second column is what is being displayed in the message window. Um, now, in our example, we were showing this axis one underscore INFLT, and when that was set, it was calling up error code number five. So that means that the CNC software is going to look in this file, look to, for error code number five, and display whatever is in that second column. So in the message window, whenever that constant is being set, it'll display 9005 space access space one space communication space in space vault okay thing that this is important is that if you are going to be creating your own custom messages uh, you need to assign first off an actual value to it uh, in order to determine that value you would have to plug in that formula once you plug in that formula that also lets you tell it what error code you're actually going to be using then once you know that error code, you also have to make sure that you modify this PLC message.txt file with that particular error code. Now, the other thing, too, that I have seen in the past, I have seen where some people have created custom messages, never put anything in the message file. And if that ever happens and you go to run the actual program and the PLC program is trying to set that particular message, in the message window, you will find a, or you will receive a message that says undefined PLC message. And that's because the CNC software is trying to display that particular message, and it can't find anything that's tied to that in this message window, or in this message file. Now, another thing that's important, which I've seen in some systems in the past, is that the messages that are in this PLC message.txt file has to match whatever is being defined in your PLC program. I've seen quite a few that the PLC program is trying to set some constant, but the message that's being displayed has absolutely nothing to do with it. For example, let's just say we had um, a PLC in fault. Okay? The PLC program would be setting this PLC in fault, and it's telling the CNC software go ahead and display what's associated with error code 23. The CNC software now looks in this PLC message.txt file, goes to error code 23, and displays what it sees there. But if this had nothing to do with that, let's say this was actually displaying a 9031 fault remove probe from spindle. Well, at that point, that means that this message was tied to this error code so the CNC software throws up this fault remove probe from spindle message the operator sees that message and because it says something about the, you know removing the probe from the spindle he's a little concerned because chances are there isn't a probe in the spindle or the probe isn't even connected so now he's trying to figure out what's going on well it'll probably take him some time and the reason for that is because he's getting the wrong information being displayed in that message window so that is one of the reasons why you want to make sure that the messages in that PLC message.txt match whatever is being defined in there. And especially if you're creating something, you always want to make sure that, that, that what you're defining in the PLC program matches the message file. The other thing, 
Another thing to also consider is let's say you have a condition that's preventing an output from turning on or putting the system into an SV stop state. If you're doing something like that, you always want to make sure that you also put in a custom message that's telling the operator why you're not turning that output on or why you're setting the control into the SV stop. It'll help the operator or at least give them an area to look for to try to figure out or try to determine what's going on. Uh, because let's say, for example, you have something that's preventing the spindle from turning on. Well, and then all of a sudden, if he's trying to run the program or trying to turn the spindle on manually and it's not turning on, if there isn't any message, he's just confused. Um, so adding messages uh, to anything that's preventing either an output from turning on or placing the control into SV stop is definitely good practice. Now let's go back to that formula again. Now we're going to talk about the one or the two. As you can see on some of these, they have a one, others have two. This is how the control tells it whether the message that's being displayed is either asynchronous or asynchronous. If there's a one plus, it means it's asynchronous. If it's a two plus, it means it's asynchronous. The one, uh, which means synchronous, means that the message is displayed whenever the system is in SV stop. And if you add the two, it means it's an asynchronous message, which gets displayed immediately. Now, depending on the type of message, if it's a fault message, chances are the fault message is also putting the system into an SV stop, which at that point, it doesn't make a difference whether you add a one or a two to it, because you're going to be displaying the message at the same time. Another thing I want to go over is in the message file, you see in the column that gets that displays the actual message, you'll see that there's a four digit number associated with that. The four digit number will always have that error code as part of the four digit number. That tells us two things. It gives a visual representation to either A, the person assisting the operator or the operator that when they see a four digit number, they know it's the PLC program that's setting that message. If they see a three digit or a 1000 series number, then that means that the CNC software is what's setting that message. Once they know that, that they see that four digit number, they know, all right, now it's the PLC program that's setting the message. So there's a condition that's being met that's displaying that message. So at that point, they can then go through the PLC program to figure out what exactly is causing that issue. 